I am the C-H-A-L-L, Donksterborn, but built for theme parks, and welcome to a theme park newsroom update, where today, Chessington World of Adventures have revealed uh, that they're going to be doing open planning uh, in May, an open public consultation at the end of May, for the plans of their next major roller coaster addition to the park. For the first time in 17 years, Chessington's going to get a new coaster. Uh, now, we do have the official uh, screenshot and image, which we'll share with you. We're going to share with you the site of where this is going to be located and share with you some possibilities that I think it could be. Now, before we get started with all of that, please like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. We're getting closer and closer to 2,500 subs. We're on the road to 4,000 subs by the end of the year, so let's get that sorted. Go in the description down below, check out the social media links, get your video ideas in through Google Forms, and do all that good stuff. And for now, guys, let's have a look at what Chessington have said on their rawsome news for the future. So it is officially stated, raw some news, excited plans for new roller coaster and children's rides at Chessington World of Adventures Resort. Online public consultation event, hear our plans and share your views. In April 2016, we presented our material master plan for a range of exciting new attractions at Chessington World of Adventures Resort. Now some materials then. <laughs> uh, a key element of the master plan was to provide a new roller coaster and other children's rides at the picnic field site on the southern part of the resort. Please see area highlighted on the opposite page, which is of course on your screen with the first page. Our master plan received a high level of support from those that attended the public exhibition host at Chessington and provided comments. This master plan has formed the basis for several planning applications and developments that have since been delivered at the resort over recent years. The COVID-19 pandemic has meant that Chessington, as with other leisure attractions, has had a very challenging year and our operations have been significantly impacted. There is a steep hill to climb on our road to recovery and Millen Entertainment, owner of Chessington, is committed to continuing the invest in the resort to realise a master plan and deliver a new roller coaster, the first at Chessington for 17 years since Dragon's Fury opened in 2004. This investment is critical to the resort's recovery to ensure it continues to attract guests and it can maintain its role as a major employer in the borough. This is a very exciting opportunity and we'd like to share our emerging plans to, with you and, your, and invite your views. Uh, we'll in hosting two virtual presentation events on the website on Tuesday, May the 18th, 2021 at 1pm and 7.30pm to explain our emerging plans. Members of the team will be able to receive your comments via a live chat and answer any questions. We are also hoping to hold, government guidance permitting, a number of face-to-face -face presentations in line with COVID-19 social distancing guidelines in our Safari Hotel Serengeti Conference Suite at various times throughout Monday, May 17, 2021. These live events will mark the beginning of a two-week public consultation, and if you can't make it to any of the events, the virtual presentation will also be available on our website for you to access information about our emerging proposals during this time. Along with an online survey for you to complete and share your views, alternatively, you can also email comments direct to us, and all comments are welcomed by May 31st, 2021. We look forward to sharing our exciting plans with you and receiving your feedback. Full details and timings of all our planned events and additional information can be found at the Chessington website. It's very, very exciting indeed, ladies and gentlemen. And let's share with you now the site in question. So as you can see on your screen right now, fan dabby dozy. It is the site in question at Chessington World of Adventures Resort. And as you can see, the picnic field or in, comma, in commas, the picnic field uh, is, is just another name uh, for what was the, it was like, the, there was like a bouncy area. I've done it on Google Maps so you can get a good idea of what the site looks like. But uh, basically, yeah, this is the, uh, there was like a bouncy sort of area, uh, a temporary bouncy area one season, I think a season or two ago now um, in this particular site. However, this is the site uh, of this, this brand new, uh, roller coaster and the children's rides that's going to surround it. Uh, I was trying to look for some more information from the fans point of view from the enthusiast point of view uh, via like forums and news sources etc. Uh, and I did have a look when it was first revealed um, on on one of the forums on the Coaster Force forum 
Um, obviously, little's currently known, but they did sort of say that it's going on the picnic field along with some children's rides. So the children's ride set to be uh, the sort of supporting act to the main course, which is the main roller coaster. Now, it's been indicated to draw upon Chessington's master plan from 2016. So what is basically going to be happening is, in my opinion, and I'll talk more about this in more detail afterwards, I think it's going to be between the two coasters that we were expecting back at their master plan back in 2016, and that is either an Intamin family launch coaster, so the list of the, the jungle ride, so uh, we had the, the ATV style ride, kind of like Yukon Quad um, at La Paul, uh, or uh, the what the pirate ride, which is a water coaster. It could be Mac, could be Intamin, could be anyone, uh, but a water coaster known as the pirate ride. So with this being near um, Dragon's Fury, or this being opposite, or opposite Dragon's Fury, uh, on that picnic field area. I'm just I'm sort of having a look at the site right now just to see like um, any nearby attractions and you know what it could conjure up in terms of you know themed areas. Um, I mean this is right near to where the Blue Barnacle is and obviously Canopy Capers and Dragon's Furies opposite and Tiny Truckers and the Sea Storms nearby and you know things like that. So I've got a feeling this will be sort of an extension to maybe land of the dragons or maybe the entrance to the coaster um will go around where blue barnacle is or near where blue barnacle is uh, and it could be part of the pirate themed area that could be the plan so it could go either way really if it is uh, potentially the jungle ride if it is the family launch coaster i do expect to pros potentially see uh, the land of the dragons area may be re-themed because i think that would be the the way forward or they may go with a completely different theme in general they may go with like a dragon theme to go with the land of the dragons or they go with a pirate theme or they go with like a wild asia theme if it's going to be entered near wild asia in terms of entrances and queue lines so it's very very interesting but now it's time to share my thoughts on both potential additions so there we are, ladies and gentlemen, thrill seeks of all ages. That is looking at Chessington's brand new roller coaster. Uh, the planning stages, the very early planning stages. Oh, I can't wait. You can see how giddy I am. Uh, but no, this is going to be a wonderful addition, guys. A wonderful addition to the park. Um, this is going to be an amazing attraction. I mean, having the children's ride support it as well. Maybe, and this is something I just thought about uh, in between clips. Maybe... This could be its own area. Maybe we're not looking at uh, an extension to Land of the Dragons or Wild Asia or the Pirate Area or uh, it, you know it's even it's even behind it's technically behind Vampire in a way. So, or, or, sorry, it's behind the Gruffalo technically. So um, it, you know it could even be counted as Wild Woods. I don't think we're looking at that. I think with the Children's Ride supporting the new coaster, I think we're looking here at a uh, a new area by itself. So again with the jungle theme. So, I think we're looking here at a completely new jungle area to, to suit the coaster. Um, and it's going to be like walking through... And I, I'm guessing in terms of layout, I'm, I mean, this is just my prediction here very early on. But in terms of layout, I'm thinking the coaster will be sort of an out and back, uh, low to the ground and upper level type layout. Uh, either way. And I think the children's ride supporting it will be dotted around the area as well. It's quite a, you know, you've got to, you've got to you know, remember it's a big area here. Because um, you've got, because obviously currently in the picnic, in, in the picnic field area. Uh, you've got the old sort of bouncy area that was there for a year. Um, you look at what Thought Park did with Balancilla, it was something similar to that for, for Chessington. Um, you had like uh, there's like a temporary area next to it as well So it's, 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 it's a quite a big area, but there was a lot of temporary things going on So we knew this is going to be a massive area for development in the future And now we finally get the first go-ahead should we say um, And it's great that Millen Entertainment are going ahead with this It's great to see Chessington seems to be the focus for the next major roller coaster It seems like they are the next park in the UK from the Merlin chain in line for their next coaster I mean I mean, things can happen. Things can happen. I mean, I'm predicting this to probably be a 2024 or 2025 edition. If there was going to be a brand new coaster in the UK before then for the Merlin chain, I'd expect it to be either Thought Park's next one or Secret Weapon 9, sort of around 2023. And then 2024 or 2025, the focus would be for Chessington. So, I mean, it's very, very interesting to see what's going to happen with this. Uh, I'm personally very, very excited for it. I hope you guys are really excited as well. And, you know, that's just sort of my predictions. I'm thinking like an out and back, low to the ground or upper level layout with the children's rides dotted around. 
between 2024 and 2025 opening and uh, the jungle theme or the pirate theme, whether it is the launch coaster or the water coaster. But I think that either would be wonderful additions because Intamin and, Intamin and Gerslau do wonderful. I mean, Gerslau maybe not sometimes, but Intamin definitely do great family launch coasters. You look at 13 as one way, the ATV sort of system, which is what the original 2016 master plan image was. Uh, you know, the Yukon Quad at LaPaul type uh, coaster. Um, go and look it up if you haven't seen that, but you know what I mean, at Juvelin, at the Joe Summerland, that's another big example uh, of an intimate family launch coaster in the ATV style seating, so I think that'd be really cool in terms of the water coaster, you're looking at Matt Rides being a big contender for the manufacturer of this ride, uh, it depends what other projects are going along with the manufacturers, because again with the launch coaster, Intamin might have a lot of projects going on around 2024, 2025 that we don't know about so, yet, so um, we, we, I mean Intamin may probably, I think it, if it is going to be a launch coaster, looking at the graphic of the ATVs and the, the Juvelin Yukon quad style seating, it's very likely to be uh, an Intamin. Uh, but I think with the water coaster, it depends on what Max doing, depends on what you know Intamin's doing, because they do the big water coasters as well. Uh, so Intamin or Mac for me for the water coaster, and then for the launch coaster, we're probably looking at Intamin by itself. So this uh, specific area will feature three main things involved in the project: uh, a new roller coaster, new rides, and new landscaping. Uh, so, the new roller coaster. Guests will propel on a car through banks and turns before coming to a dead end on the track adjacent to the theme structure on the southern part of the site, as seen by the uh, map of the overall area. Uh, the car will then be propelled along the same route back to the station located on the northeast part of the site. Uh, a hard standing ride maintenance area is to be provided adjacent to the ride station. Uh, we have two children's rides. The exact details are not yet known. Uh, will be confirmed, but there will be com co uh, comprised two low-level rides similar in character to Sea Storm and Jungle Bus currently at the resort. We're going to talk about the flat rides, the children's rides, in a little bit. And, of course, new landscaping to enhance the surrounding environment of the area. Now, in terms of the children's rides, we have four examples, as seen by this Chessington Buzz image. Shout out Chessington Buzz. Credit to Chessington Buzz for this particular image, uh, taken from the presentation itself on the presentation day. Uh, now, this is um, a look at the four different types of children's rides. So, you've got one uh, bounce around, uh, you've got a, a sort of uh, flying hot air balloon attraction, I guess. Uh, it's, like, it's like Pepper's Balloon Ride in Pepper Pig World at Poulton's Park, but uh, in the shape of Zeppelin balloons rather than uh, hot air balloons. Uh, you've also got something like Squid Surfer at Legoland Windsor. And you've also got like something like Jungle Bus, but it's like the seating style of Ramesses Revenge. <laughs> I think that's kind of like paying homage to Ramesses Revenge in a way, but it's like a flat uh, circular twister. So it's nice to see these children's rides. Now, it has to be noted that two of those rides uh, will be uh, chosen. Only two of them. So only expect to see two of those four. Maybe they could use the other two in other areas of the theme park. Stay tuned for more on my thoughts on that particular part of the project. But let's have a look at a concept art image of the station for the coaster. Fan Dabby Dozy, look at that. What do you notice? What do you notice here? The car, uh, the, the way the station's low down, the way the track's on the, uh, on the station. I mean, does this scream, and you can see the bridge on either side, does this scream wing coaster to you now i think people will immediately comment oh well you know you see one gate one side and one gate the other you think wing coaster it could be a powered coaster it could be one of them trust me do you see the staircase right at the top up there i think we're looking here at a wing coaster and i did see some posts from people saying there are sources saying that it could potentially be a family wing coaster i'll tell you something now i will be a fan of that um now, in terms of the description of the roller coaster layout uh, on the, uh, the the website of this project, the roller coaster layout apparently has been carefully designed to make the most of the changing levels on site and minimise views with higher coaster elements being located at the lower levels of the site. The proposed layout ensures that the majority of structure will be screened from external views by existing boundary trees and landscaping, where there will be glimpses of the upper elements of track slash theming, They'll be seen in the context of other existing rides and man-made features in the landscape. 
Uh, now, there are different views that you can see on the website yourself uh, from different points. And it should be very, very interesting. Of course, the name Amazon Land does signal an Amazon theme. And it should be very interesting uh, to see what happens there. But overall, I think this is an adventure that we're not likely to forget. Now, obviously, one other major thing to talk about is the next step. So... Uh, the 17th of May 2021, the start of the two-week public consultation. Uh, we've got two online virtual presentations starting tomorrow on the 18th of May. On the 31st of May, the public consultation will end. In June this year, the review consultation responses and the final design development. In early July 2021, they finalised the planning application to submit to the council. September, October 2021, the planning decision issued by the council. Uh, construction set to start in January 2022 and to be confirmed the new land opening to the public and I personally believe if construction is going to start in January and with this with, with this project uh, being such a big project I expect this to be a 2023 opening I'm not going to lie to you guys but it is very very exciting there we go, ladies and gentlemen, Thrill Six of All Ages. That is talking about Amazon Land at Chessington World Events Resort. That's not the final name, but I've got a feeling it might be. Um, wow. Uh, I mean, if you want my personal thoughts on it... <coughs> round of applause. Round of applause, Chessington World Adventures. I think we're looking here at Family Wing Coaster. I'm going to say it now. Family Wing Coaster. That is what we're looking at here. With a boomerang element. Who would have thought it? Um, but my goodness me. What a great looking area. And a great way to celebrate 17 years without a major roller coaster. It will have a 1.4 meter height restriction. Which is the same level as Rattlesnake. Which is very interesting indeed. Um... I don't think this will have an inversion. I mean, it's not Chessington's DNA to have inversions. But I think that from the look of the plan, I think it looked like it wouldn't have an inversion. So, I think that's what we're looking at here in terms of the design of the coaster. So, I personally think that's what we're looking at. We're not looking at any inversions. We're looking at a 1.4 meter height restriction ride confirmed by the public consultation plans. Uh, family wing coaster is what's been reported by multiple people. We don't know if that's confirmed or not. Manufacturer said to be confirmed in the next, you know, in the, in the, in the near future. Uh, if it is a family wing coaster, then I'd be looking probably at Intamin to, to, to build this. So according to Ride Rater, there are multiple manufacturers in the running. Now, Bulger and Mabiod are not the sole contender. Apparently, the park said in the consultation that Vacoma, Matt Wright, B&M, Guslora and ART Engineering are all in the running and that the train design, method of propulsion as well as the inclusion of any inversions or steep banking is up to the manufacturers to include in their design proposal. So the ride not may necessarily be launched or have any inversions and it might not necessarily be a wing coaster. This is just an artistic design to show the overall area of the coaster. Now the only thing they've decided is the basic layout itself that it will be a boomerang style roller coaster and have a 1.4 meter height restriction. Uh, so basically that's the only thing that's been decided. It's a boomerang style coaster or a shuttle coaster and it'll have 1.4 meter height restriction. So that's the only two things really that they've decided. Uh, now someone in a forum, in the Coast Force forum, a guy called Matt, shout out to him, actually put some pros and cons for each manufacturer. So I'm going to have a look at his pros and cons. Again, shout out to Matt if you're watching this from the Coast Force forum. I'm going to shout, I'm going to go through his pros and cons, shout out the manufacturers and why the what he thinks the pros and cons are for each manufacturer and share my thoughts on his pros and cons and sort of sort of debate which manufacturer I think it will be or sort of debate a top 2 or 3. So let's go through the pros and cons of each of the manufacturers right now. So first up, Vacoma. So in terms of going for a Vacoma, they have vast experience manufacturing shuttle coasters and they're arguably king of the shuttle coasters. Though it's now discontinued, the traditional boomerang was the most cloned roller coaster layout of all time, and even now the family boomerang seems to be flying off the shelves at a rate of knots. Now, as they seem fairly keen to innovate when required, working with Disney on numerous various unique attractions, and rides like Fly at Fantasia Land prove that Vacoma is not shy when it comes to inventing new ride concepts. So, you can imagine that the wackiness of this ride concept will be well within their capabilities. Now, even though Mellon has never built a Vacoma coaster in any of their parks, well, recently anyway, um, 
They've fairly recently done business with Vekoma through Legoland Division, Haunted House Monster Party at Legoland Windsor, uh, with the fairly recent Vekoma installation. So Vekoma might have some kind of link uh, to Brogen, two of the manufacturer that builds the flying theatre models that currently seem to be springing up at Legoland Parks. Now, they're not a particularly expensive manufacturer either. Now, in terms of being against Vekoma, now, I'm, we're not sure how up for building the rumoured wing trains Vekoma would be. Now, of course, they're keen to innovate, but they've never done anything quite like a wing coaster before. And by nature, the wing trains might risk endangering Vekoma's reputation for building silky smooth coasters. Now, they also haven't built any thrill oriented shuttle coasters. And as much as they said about Millie working with Vekoma before, they've never worked with Vekoma on a major bespoke thrill coaster before. And the new Vekoma is still slightly alien to the Western market at the moment. So Vekoma could have a good chance, but there's reasons to say against Vekoma. Next up, Mac Rice. Now, they've done a fair bit of work with the Legoland Parks. Uh, they did help them out with the new Duplo Dino Coaster at Legoland Winter a bit. Uh, they've worked with the Matt Wildmouse as well. Of course, Rattlesnake at Chessington is one of them. They've built launch shuttle-ish coasters like the Capital Bullet Train at Motion Gate Dubai and Star Trek at Movie Park Germany. Now, also, they've built thrill coasters. They don't tend to be too intense, so it could be brilliant for the family thrill demographic of Chessington World Adventures. Now, in terms of going against Matt Wrights, they are quite pricey. They're not stroke, uh, stricken as the most innovative of manufacturers uh, in terms of different things. Of course, they've gone uh, more innovative in recent times with the inverted power coaster, but even that's just a variation on the inverted coaster. Similar to B&M, max selling point comes down to reliable, comfortable, luxury roller coasters. So we're not sure they see them plumping for something like a wing coaster or whatever seating gimmick Merlin seemingly wants from the ride. Now, there's rumours that Mac are reportedly not too fond of Merlin as a client and wouldn't be keen to work with them on a major bespoke project. As such, they're not sure whether this would harm the chances of Merlin picking them. Uh, now, leaning on from the above, Merlin have never worked on Mac on a major bespoke ride project, so it is obviously uh, a very interesting uh, verdict. So, it should be interesting with Mac Rides is the chosen manufacturer. Now, a Bulliger and Mabiar coaster would justify all of the 1.4 meter height restrictions. They've worked with Merlin. Uh, Merlin and B&M can work together on innovative coasters before. They worked on the dive coaster firstly in 1998, the flying coaster firstly in 2002, and the wing coaster around 2011 first. So, you know, they are the kings of innovation, of classic innovation from the last couple of decades. And of course, the main argument for B&M is that they're the only manufacturer currently actively building wing coasters right now. So this gives them a fair shot. Now, of course, going against B&M, they are very pricey. They've never built a shuttle coaster, um, you know, before. Um, of course, you know, you do have the, the launch sequence on Thunderbird, uh, which is a B&M wing coaster at Holiday World. They have the, the, the launch sequence on that wing coaster. But uh, not a full launch coaster. It's, it's, it's a different type of launch coaster. Uh, it's not really a shuttle coaster as well. So, you know, it's a full circuit. Thunderbird's a full circuit launch coaster. So they've not really done a shuttle coaster before. So obviously it's a bit of a risk with B&M. However, if you take away the price and the uh, sort of, you know, the, the risks with that, I would say B&M have a fairly good chance. Now, Merlin have worked with Gerslauer quite a few times before, and they're a fairly cheap manufacturer, and they've built a fair number of shuttle coasters. And as much as Gerslauer don't currently offer a wing coaster, they aren't scared of innovation either. Now, the main thing against Gerslauer, and it relates back to a certain incident six years ago, it was the Smiler incident, would Merlin work with Gerslauer again? I'm not too sure. So the verdict's out on that one. Finally, ART Engineering. They seem to be one of Merlin's, Merlin's staunchiest allies for recent projects, doing a lot of work for LEGO, also building the fairly recent Ghostbusters 5D at Heidi Park in Germany. Now, ART seem to have a fairly wide repertoire and don't seem afraid to work outside the box, even though they don't really offer any thrill coasters. Now, would they be willing to work on a major thrill coaster? I'm not too sure. Now, given the number of smaller parks work with them, I guess the ART aren't that expensive, which would suit the philosophy of low-cost ride hardware and big theming budget of Merlin Entertainment perfectly. So it should be interesting if ART are the most likely manufacturer. So let's go and decide my top two, or should I say my top three list of manufacturers that could work on the Chessington project. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen, Thrill Seeks of All Ages. That is looking at each manufacturer. Shout out to Matt for putting his pros and cons of each, each of the five manufacturers in the forum. Uh, and uh, shout out to you. Credit goes to you for your 
for and against arguments. And I, I agree. And the reason why I read them out in this video is because I totally agree with each of the for and against arguments. And I wanted to say that publicly. Um, but taking into account Matt's for and against arguments, which I agree with all of them. What would be my top three list? Well, before we put them in order, let's just decide the top three in any order. So let's rule out the two that I think will be ruled out. The first one I'm going to rule out is Gus Lauer, because I think that the Smiler incident was just too much right now. I think it's way too soon, even now, six years later, to work with Gus Lauer, with Mellon Entertainment's relationship with Gus Lauer. And because Smiler had so many problems, even before the incident, uh, six years ago, you know, there was, there was little incidents, kept getting delayed before it was officially open. It had little things here and there, uh, you know, on the way. And, you know, I think that the relationship needs to be built a little bit more over time in the next few years. So I think that that's a big major factor into why Gerstler is not on my top three. It, you never know. They might have gone past that incident by now in terms of the manufactured relationship with the client. But I feel like, you know, that's a major factor. So I think Gerstler is out of my top three. Uh, Mac Rise is the second one out of my top three. And I'm going to have people in the comments already going, No, not Mac Rise out of the top three. Hear me out. They're really expensive, and, you know, they could do a family thrill coaster, yes, but I do feel like Matt Rides isn't the kind of relationship Merlin has right now. I don't feel like they've worked with them on recent projects, in my opinion, in terms of ma not just major coasters. Like, you know, they got a little bit involved with Dupo Dino Coaster at Legoland Windsor a couple of years ago, but, I mean, major family thrill coasters. We're not talking kids' coasters, we're talking family thrill to extreme coasters so i feel like that relationship with mac ha isn't there yet it will be set in stone at some point in the future but maybe not now so i think that max out the running for me and the fact they're expensive as well in my opinion just makes it even more unreal unrealistic for matt rice to do this project uh so that leaves vacoma bulgar and mabiard and art engineering now in third place i'm going to go with art engineering and the reason why i've gone with art is because, you know, they haven't really worked on a massive family thrill coaster or a thrill coaster. Um, so I don't think they'd be right for this project, even though they have a wonderful relationship with Merlin and the smaller parks outside of Merlin as well. Uh, they've got a re really good relationship with all their clients, you know, like any other manufacturer would have. And I think that overall, I think ART Engineering have got a decent shout here. So uh, I think I'm going to put them third. They're in my top three, so they're in with a realistic shout, but I think they're third in my list. Second place, I'm going to give to Vacoma because I think that, uh, again, there isn't that sort of thrilling coaster and the, the reason why they haven't done a wing coaster before. So I don't think Vacoma would be up for that, even though they are very innovative with their silky smooth coasters uh, in recent years. So I think that Vacoma is second. They're still realistic, very realistic to do it. But it would be interesting to see if they did do it because I don't think they would do a wing, a wing coaster, which I think it will be. I think it'll be a family wing coaster. So to summarise exactly what's been going on as all these planning images go flying about on your screen while I talk about this, basically what's been happening here is we have a brand new roller coaster surrounded by a couple of children's attractions to accumulate the Amazon land area of the theme park. Now, the big surprising thing here is, and it's, it's a few little details about each attraction. Now, first of all, according to Attraction Source, of course, formerly known as South Parks, as part of the Towers Times News Group, uh, Attraction Source reported that it's expected that the children's rides, the two children's rides, are set to be manufactured by SBF Visa. Now, first of all, that for me, in my opinion, is completely unexpected. It is completely expected. Uh, with Croc Drop being an SBF Visa drop tower in the same style as Magma at Poulton's Park. So I think it's very, very like it was very likely that the children's rides would be manufactured by SBF Visa as part of a three for two years deal. Uh, now, obviously, the roller coaster is the big concern. However, I can confirm from these planning images and from the style of the station platform image, uh, which will either come flying across your screen or has been on your screen, either way. Uh, the station platform image of the, of the artistic designs and landscaping plans shows and confirms a B&M wing coaster, a launch shuttle B&M wing coaster with an inversion, especially with the zero G roll over the station sort of area. That sort of element, or that sort of particular element of the coaster's layout uh, sort of gives an indication uh, that this is a wing coaster. Now, in terms of the theme, this has been the interesting discussion. Now, obviously, there is rumours and reports of a Jumanji theme coming into this particular uh, coaster after the site of the area and the whole style of the area looks like pieces of the Jumanji board game. 
Now, I'm going to share my thoughts on all of that and the Jumanji rumour right now. There we are, ladies and gentlemen, thrill seekers of all ages. That is a summary of what's been discovered from the planning images online from Chessington World Adventures on their 2023 Amazon land and launched B&M Wing Shuttle Coaster. Now, obviously, you're going to want to hear my thoughts. Overall, I love the look of this area. I think it's stylized nice. I think it could be a wonderful thing indeed. Now, the whole Jumanji rumor going on. I think we're sort of looking towards a Jumanji theme. Is it a Jumanji theme? We don't know. But there is a couple of pieces of evidence that fall into place. First of all, the theming structure, sort of in the middle of the, the shuttle turnaround, back, going to the backward section of the coaster. That whole theming structure could be a similar kind of structure to what we see in the old, uh, of the uh, newer Jumanji sequel posters. You know, that big tiger statue. I think that could be what could be the theming structure in the middle. Also, with the Jumanji rumour, Gardaland is set to add a Jumanji-themed indoor coaster in the Ramesses The Awakening building. So, could Merlin have signed an IP deal with Jumanji to give us two brand new attractions? And it's not the first time we've seen this. Remember Imperial Leather back in 2005, 2006, I guess? around to the, Between 2004 and 2006. Uh, where we had the log flume changed into the flume unplugged and bubble works rethemed at Chessington with Alton Towers and Chessington having the same IP. So Chessington and Gardaland looks like they're having their own Jumanji IP with Jumanji themed coasters at both parks. So I think that's the best example I could give with that situation. So I think it is definitely pointing to Jumanji or something similar. Maybe it's Chessington's own version of Jumanji. Who knows? Uh, but we will see. The evidence does point towards a Jumanji IP. Would I be against that? Not really, because I think that it's a great IP to use. Yes, it's a very limited IP, depending on the popularity of the rebooted film franchise with the sequels, with The Rock, Kevin Hart, Karen Gillian, uh, Jack Black, all those brilliant actors and actresses. So, we'll see what happens with that, but it's one of those things we'll just have to look out for. But, I think overall this is a wonderful, thrilling investment for Chessington in 2023, and I'm really looking forward to it. So TriStar Pictures has filed for a trademark in the UK for Jumanji for use as location-based entertainment services and amusement park services. Now this will strongly support the theory of the Amazon land being a Jumanji themed area at Chessington World of Adventures Resort. Now this, in my opinion, looks very dead set to be on uh, theme to Jumanji. Uh, obviously, we know some of the things about it already about the project. We know it's going to be a couple of children trying to support as, as part of a support network of the main attraction in the new area, which is the brand new uh, launched B&M shuttle wing coaster uh, opening at the park. Chessington, in my opinion, will be a visit for 2022 or 2023 for sure, or both years even, because uh, I do want to check out construction on this as well. But overall, let's have a look at my thoughts on what's been discovered. There we are, ladies and gentlemen, thrill seeks of all ages, Chessington World Adventures, Jumanji-themed Amazon land for 2023 for the new coaster and the new rides. Looks pretty much dead set on. Oh, I'd probably give it, I'd probably say it's 85 to 90% happening at the moment in terms of the theme of Jumanji. I know it's happening, but in terms of the Jumanji theme, I'd probably say it's 90%. There is still that 10% that's like, maybe there's a U-turn, uh, but 90%, I'd say it's dead happening that Jumanji will be the theme of the uh, Chessington new area, the new area of Chessington for uh, for 2023. Maybe not the whole area, maybe it's just, maybe the whole area is still like Amazon land, but maybe it's just a Jumanji IP within Amazon land, so you can have that originality with the rest of the attractions and the buildings, etc. Um, it's just a theory of mine, but um, I'd like to really see Jumanji be the theme of the coaster rather than the whole area. So, um, and especially with the claim as well, we're trying to start pictures putting this claim, uh, trademark in the UK for Jumanji for amusement park services. I would like to see Jumanji be the name of the coaster, and I'd rather keep it as the coaster and then have the originality of the Amazon line with the rest of the attractions. So, just a theory of mine, but comment down below if you agree or not. So, Chessington World Events has been given the green light. Construction can now go ahead with planning permission now finalised with the walls site uh, with the site walls up and work on clearing already underway. The project, set to include three new rides, including a brand new roller coaster attraction, is planned to open in 2023. The new roller coaster is well needed, and it's the first new coaster at the park since the 2004 Dragon's Fury. The ride is expected to be a wing coaster built by manufacturer Bulger and Mabillard, aka B and M. 
Event. Featuring multiple launches and a boomerang layout, the ride is the first of its kind for the manufacturer. Alongside the new roller coaster, there will be two other attractions. One is a Miami type ride and the other is a small children's carousel attraction. The area will also feature heavy theming, including a large themed structure that lays within the layout of the new roller coaster. Other large theming statues and themed paving and planting complete the area. Thought to be themed after the Jumanji film series, the new area looks set to be a game changing addition at the theme park. Now let's speak about my thoughts on the go ahead on Project Amazon. There we are ladies and gentlemen, Thrill Six of all ages, that is speaking about the go ahead for Project Amazon at Chessington World of Adventures Resort. Now we've covered this project from the first rumours and the first planning images uh, right from the very start of the project. Um, and for me this, again like, like the information I just read out, this is a game changing addition for Chessington. I think it gives them a very nice solid few additions to the park. Um, I mean, first of all, the two other attractions, the Miami type ride and the children's carousel, vast array of audiences, target audiences for the park. And then you've got the big signature thrilling coaster uh, that will be the signature ride at the park. For me, for me, it overtake, well, it could potentially overtake Vampire as the signature roller coaster in the theme park. You've obviously got your other coasters like your Rattlesnake, your Dragon's Fury, your Scorpion Express. But for me, in terms of big thrill rides this is the biggest thrill ride Chessington will will make at the moment and it could pave the way for future additions to come in the thrill market and I think that it could be a nice interesting addition to the park and now we've got the go-ahead we can just count down the days till 2023 in the back of our minds and when this opens um, Obviously, the rumor at the minute in terms of theme is looking increasingly likely to be Jumanji uh, and using the IP. It's not, you know, an unknown uh, variety for Merlin to use intellectual properties or IPs. Uh, so, the Jumanji IP was an IP that I was expecting at some point at Chessington, to be perfectly honest. Um, I've got a feeling this Jumanji IP is a two year deal because obviously you've got Jumanji the Adventure opening this year, which is a dark ride at Gardaland, a dark ride sort of coaster kind of thing uh, at Gardaland. Um, and then you've got this rumoured Jumanji area with a coaster at Chessington the following year. So I've got a feeling it's a two attraction deal, a sort of two for one IP deal. Um, and I think that Merlin are definitely making the best business proposition out of this intellectual property. I think I've said before though, my worries in the past has been what kind of, um, what, what, what will they do when the intellectual property runs out? So that'll be a question asked later on down the years, but overall, solid addition for Chessington. Chessington World of Adventures Resort and Sony Pictures Entertainment have announced today World of Jumanji. Set to open in spring 2023, this £17 million development marks the world's first themed land for the box office hit Jumanji film franchise and the single largest investment in the history of the renowned UK resort. The project brings together entertainment and industry experts from around the world as they create a world's first experience that deep dives into the event adventures of action-packed stories seen in the box office hit Jumanji films. For those who think they are brave enough to enter the world, a first look at some of the proposed designs give an exciting glimpse as to what to expect. The impressive entrance portal, which is shrouded with the omnibus and overgrown Jumanji jungle that dominates the development, creates the perfect immersive starting point for guests as they prepare to take on a whole host of challenges. Now, of course, in terms of rising attractions in the area, we know one of the major attractions coming to the park and that is the launch shuttle B&M wing roller coaster now of course this is the centerpiece attraction of the themed section of the park obviously from the images we have the the jungle entrance portal with a 17 meter high jaguar shrine the details of the rides and attractions uh, that will populate world of jumanji are reportedly set to be revealed in the coming months according to variety Com. Now, um, obviously, like I said, we knew about one of the rides anyway because it is the launched Bulgar and Mabillard winged shuttle launch coaster. Uh, you saw from those original plans, the original um, drawings and designs. I will share those on your screen right now. Fan Dabby Dozy. Uh, those are the original drawings and plans uh, for this brand new roller coaster. Now, obviously, 
uh, this w this is a um, th this is the sort of new style of wing coaster coming to the park from B and M. Uh, this is the launched style, so there will be an inversion. Uh, there will be obviously the shuttle elements. There is one element that is part of the concept arts that was revealed this week, and that is of course the spiral around that Jaguar. Uh, shrine so uh, very interesting stuff there and of course you can see that the coaster will pretty much uh, wrap itself around uh, most of the area uh, now you do have some other attractions and experiences and uh, things that will be a part of this area now of course we knew already uh, that there will be two children's rides um, so obviously in terms of the other rides and attractions, the low level flat rides, now we don't know what, uh, we're unclear at the moment as to ri what ride A will be in the, in the original plans, however ride B will be a junior Miami type attraction, so that's what we're expecting for ride B. Ride A, I mean looking in closer detail, for me personally, I would probably go on a limb and say it's some kind of spinning attraction, some sort of child spinning attraction. Uh, but we know from the plans for Ride B that it will be a Junior Miami style attraction. So uh, I would say probably a children's spinner ride and a Junior Miami attraction. That's just going off of uh, what I can see from Ride A's original plans. Escaped from the cinema and way beyond a board game. World of Jumanji sucks families in. Follow in the footsteps of Dr. Bravestone through a whole world of adventures to locate the Jaguar's eye jewel, lift the curse, and save Jumanji. Now, first of all then, before we get into the area, there is an exclusive addition to the hotel. The World of Jumanji, ahead of its opening in the theme park, be the first to sleep in one of six new Jumanji-themed rooms opening price and dates may subject to change in availability on the Saturday the 1st of April in the Chessington Safari Hotel. From the 1st of April, drop into a fully immersive jungle overnight experience where adventurers will be able to stay in a uniquely themed room. While grown-ups nap at the foot of the Jaguar Shrine, kids catch some Zs in bunk beds under canvas in their own tent with the mandrills and hippos of Jumanji nearby. So you can have the option there to stay overnight in the Jessington Safari Hotel in six newly themed Jumanji themed rooms. What about the attractions? Well, we have a one main signature roller coaster. It's Chessington's first coaster in 19 years of operation at the theme park. It is located opposite Dragon's Fury in the southern area of the park in a big field. Uh, it used to be an inflatable bounce course for a, a, a little while during the summer a couple of years back, but now it's going to be home to a permanent area with the main signature attraction leading the charge, and that is Mandrill Mayhem, the first coaster to include an inversion in the park's history, and the first Bolger and Mabillard roller coaster in Chessington World Adventures history as well. So get swept up in the long arms of a Mandrill in the world's only Jumanji roller coaster. Ride around the iconic sites of Jumanji, brave Chessington's first inversion, and all while dodging the hazards of the jungle. It will be the same height restriction as Legoland Deutschland's new family wing coaster, themed of course to Lego Mythica. Now the train will feature seven rows, one more than the six referred to in the planning document applications. The back row, so called, will face in the opposite direction. So Brave It Backwards returns to the Merlin chain after what, a few years? After Brave It Backwards ended on the swarm at Thought Park Resort? Very interesting indeed. Now I wonder if that feature's going to stay past a couple of years or a few years. I do wonder about that. Just restraints shown in the main key visual differ from those of existing Bulger and Mabiar wing roller coasters, in both not featuring a vest restraint and the over-the-shoulder restraints having alternative shaping. There'll be a near-miss element in the form of wooden spikes, in quotations. The finished look of the station building is also shown to feature vegetation, canopies, and a string of lights. In addition to the main signature roller coaster in the area, there are two other flat ride family attractions. First up, Ostrich Stampede, which is known as an SBF Visa Super Jumper. So think of your King Frog, King Hopper fairground style ride, but a more permanent version. Right on the back of one of the world's largest birds and join the Stampede. Watch out though, you may need to swerve a hurdle or two on your journey through the dunes. Bit of friendly advice there from the park. Now the other attraction is Mamba Strike. This is an SBF Visa top dancer, alternatively referred to as the Junior Miami. If you go down to the bazaar today, you might just get a big venomous surprise, a black Mamba. 
does the fans on a dizzying, untamable ride site in the heart of Jumanji. Now, all three rides and attractions have a 1.2 meter height restriction. Now then, there is another attraction which doesn't require a height restriction, and that is the Jungle Maze. Can you navigate through the Jungle Maze? Some pathways trickier than others. Now, this will have a layout based on the iconic Jumanji board game, and some of these are said to be trickier to navigate than others, with concept art showing some wooden obstacles for guests to traverse. Alongside the attractions, the area will include themed food, drinks, and merchandise available in the area, and it will make sense for much of these to be available from the outlets in the bazaar. So then, that is the world of Jumanji. I am so excited about this new themed area. I'm excited about the attractions that you're going to experience in the area. I think Chessington's going to knock this right out of the park. The new Jumanji themed room should be available on the 1st of April. So, I should be expecting the themed area to be available around April as well. Around April or May is what I'm expecting for the new themed area. Which means, April or May, fingers crossed, you're going to get a vlog from Chessington World of Adventure Resort on the opening day, fingers crossed again, of the world of Jumanji. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll make it down to Chessington Maybe stay overnight over at the resort hotel for the opening day. Maybe stay in the Jumanji themed room, try and get some good shots of the Jumanji room as well. It's going to be all going down in that month when the world of Jumanji is set to open. It all should be going down on the channel. Brand new content, maybe some POVs, hopefully. And it should be an all round fantastic experience. So overall, the world of Jumanji looks fan dabby dozy. Thank you very, very much. For watching this video, make sure you do like, comment, and subscribe. And for now, I'm the C H A L L. Tara for now.